everybody for coming today for our county competition. Um, I wanted to remind everyone that this is being paid for by the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act of 2009 and that the program was managed by the Hardin County Schools, Schools, the Lincoln Trail Innovation Center, and the Kentucky Student Ventures Program. Uh, the big competition will be next Friday, July 31st, and it will be referred to as the Green Summer Forever. And there, our Best of County team will compete against other county teams uh, for, I guess, the Best of Kentucky. Uh, our judges for today, we have our Clarkson Mayor, Bonnie Henderson, Harold Miller from WRECC, Eddie Chambers, Principal of Clarkson School, and Misty Mudd, Editor of the News Gazette. And I think our first group to start will be the Green Guard. So, Green Guard. Before we begin, I'd like to thank everybody for being here today. On behalf of the Green Guards, uh, we really do appreciate everybody. So, uh, let's get started then. I'm Blake Carter. I'm Derek Pretty. I'm Chuck. And this is this this PowerPoint's gonna be basically about habitats and rain gardens. And this this is really a summary of what we do through this program pretty much. And we'll just see what we have for those. Um, the Green Entrepreneurial Leadership Institute. Um, it is basically a summer youth program funded by the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act of 2009 by President Barack Obama. These are some facts about Kentucky's habitat. Sadly, habitat loss is the single most problem facing Kentucky wildlife today. About 95% of the Kentucky's land is privately owned. Um, this slide here tells about how we sat down and thought about how we would construct our team's habitat. Um, we tried to base it on a deciduous forest type, and we tried to include things such as bird feeders. Uh, a walk bridge and various types of flowers, mainly native flowers that you would find around here, just so we can attract uh, the native type of wildlife for observation and learning privileges. <coughs> these, these are some benefits of building habitat, like their water conservation, Attracting more wildlife for observation, creating habitat is needed by diversity of wildlife. Uh, it would protect the environment by reducing the amount of use of pesticides. Um, when we thought about building our habitat, we said we need to have some water in this, like some type of water resource. So we thought of a small pond and have, for example, types of like a flower, some type of plant. So we thought we said lily pads would be great. So we thought about it and we said that a pond would just really set off a, a habitat and really attract things to it. Because I mean, just like all basic life, you need water to survive. So we thought about including um, fish and frogs and maybe it would attract you know other various types of wildlife to it. We would also want to put a walk bridge in our habitat, in our habitat plan that we'd like to have. Because it, it'd be good for scenery and stuff like that. Uh, we didn't really get a chance to go into our habitat plan as much as we like. Even though our rain garden we designed out here uh, in front of the school, it's kind of habitat for insects and birds and butterflies and stuff like that. But if we had more time and maybe more, I guess, time, we could look in this idea of the habitat plan more and maybe go, go farther with it. Uh, we've had a lot of uh, motivational, inspirational speakers come. Uh, Mo Miller, Burt Walker, Vicki Whitaker, Renee White, Kinder Ewing, Matt Brown, and Harold Miller, and Dava Joe. And they really like gave us some good information and inspired us to do other stuff. Like Mo Miller was, uh, he told us how easy it is to start your own business if you just put forth the effort and believe in and stuff. Matt Brown discussed the concepts of the green community and ways to get involved in going green and solar power usage. And all these people that's come, we really appreciate, appreciate them coming. They really, they really, they really helped us on this presentation a lot. The kind of yeah. a lot of information we've used and helped us on it. Um, we actually uh, we made the paper thanks to uh, Missy. 
Missy, I'm sorry. Yeah, yes, me. appreciate it so much for helping us out with that. And um, uh, this goes through uh, our months when we just, it covers like some of the activities we've done, who we've met with, and it uh, just kind of tells like what the people talked to us about, what they told us. And uh, it just mainly covers like um, everything we've been through. And it tells, uh, you can't really see the, or the clipping here, but yeah, it, it goes over in the, the article about what we've done. It's such that we accomplished. Uh, it's just a list of it. Here's, here's some stuff we did in July. Yeah, it goes all through that. So, those how our websites were created. We shared our projects and ideas with members of Clarkson School staff. Met with Mayor Anderson. She presented our program activities to the Clarkson City Council and Commissioner. Met with Missy and they print an article about our projects and activities in the paper. And then we did some more involvement with some stuff. Uh, City Hall and Keith Jones. One day we went out and put mulch in three playgrounds. We did like about seven truckloads of mulch. We put in all the playgrounds and put new mulch in all of them. Then we worked with Neil and Brad Harrison at the sewage plant and we pulled weeds and tilled that to get it ready for the summer or the winter one. And then Judge Gary Loxton, uh, we went out to the judicial building and landscaped that out. Did some stuff out there for a day. And Bonnie had us take some, we worked out here through the city of Clarkson, took some flags and ribbons off the telephone poles for Independence Day. And one day, uh, one of the days with City Hall boys, we uh, they had us put ducks in the pond at the city park. We put ducks in the pond. Uh, there's just a picture of the judicial building. That's where he's working at. Oh, there's, where's the judicial building making the dirt down trying to make it level before they can plant grass or something. This is us at the, uh, taking some of the flags down, we was doing it around Carpenter City of Carson. Um, this is telling about our field trip to Salido, and, um, what we did was we went up there and, um, they gave us a tour of the uh, habitats, and they actually showed us a, uh, a rain garden they had up there that they had made, and uh, it really it helped us um, form our ideas of ours and what we planned on doing with us. So we uh, thank them for that too, and uh, we really had a great time up there. Um, we've met a lot of people up there that were that were really um, educated on it, and they gave us a lot of good ideas for everything that we plan on doing and they actually mentioned something to us about uh, this program that was going on about 2010 rain guards before 2010 and it's basically saying um, that they're trying to get started like where people will uh, make rain gardens around you know the state and hopefully before you know the year of 2010 we can have that many going on so and we'd like to be submitted in that and they'll give us a plaque or something we'll try to get into that though yeah, we are maybe we'll, we'll be like number sixty something or something. Okay, there's your pictures of Salado we took while he's up there. Yeah, that this bottom right here is actually um, the rain garden that they showed yeah, us that's there. The rain gardens. Yeah. We took a trip to MTD, which is that what that stands for? Modern Transmission Development. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's what. I uh, went through an informative tour of that plant. Uh, we learned many interesting things. Uh, like for one of the for one of the most interesting things we learned is uh, before they went through recycling and reusing the, and re, uh, dealing with the renewable resources, they would empty their their dumpster they had uh, usually daily. Sometimes daily, they had to go take to the landfill, empty it out. And they went to recycling, re reusing, separating their materials like plastic and paper, and it went from once every three months. You can see how much that saves over time, as long as you just put effort into it. And there's, uh, they're showing us all the stuff that they recycle and don't have to put in the thing to where they have to empty it every week or every day. And that's how they sort it all out in different little <coughs> trash cans. And uh, that's some of the uh, recycled material again in the bins. They said uh, some of those that they compact that you can see back here in the background here can weigh up to 1,200 pounds. So that is a lot. Yeah, it's just, it's, they said they didn't save uh, too much money on recycling, but in the, in the long run, 
they don't take to the landfill, so they save money like doing by, that, by doing that. Um, this is when we went to the Litchfield Recycling Center, and Keith Jones came in, and he basically went over everything he planned uh, and has been doing to try to help Litchfield be more conservative and get into recycling more. And he said that once, since he started the recycling business, he actually had more elderly people. Uh, he said it surprised him that would come and participate in the recycling. He said he expected to be more kids involved in it. And he said that there was, but he said it really did shock him, the elderly people that would come out and participate as well. There's a picture of Keith talking to us, and that's his, his uh, I guess that's his head guy in the recycling center. Yeah. There's and then, a truck, they separate all the stuff in. Yeah, yeah, they have glass, plastic, and for example, paper, they separate into three bins in that truck, and they bring it in by the truckloads, and crush it, and unpack it up. Out of all the trips we've taken, it might be surprising, but I thought the, we thought the water, treatment plant, the water treatment plant was the most interesting. And it just, they went over the stages of the water treatment process, how they treat it, how they clean it. Uh, they have to have somebody on watch on this plant 24-7, 365 days a year. There's always somebody there on holidays and everything, so at least somebody's got to be there. What was the guy's name that we met? What was his name? Marvin, somebody? Was Marvin. Marvin. Marvin, I don't forget his last name. He was there. He said he's there a lot. And he's a, he gave us a tour. It was his first tour. He did a pretty good job. Yeah. He went over to Bidity Levels, which is uh, how clean the water is. Mm -hmm. Grayson County is some of, the, some of the cleanest water in the state because last year they ranked in the top three. Because um, the state normally allows, uh, I think, a water purity of 3.0 at least point three, yeah, at least point three, and theirs was point zero three, which is really mm -hmm. that's a long ways from it. I, I'm not surprised all the water was that clean. There he is; it's a little blurry. That's that, that's at the water plant. He was, yeah. going, he was going up to bitty levels right there with us. And then he shows us the meters. They have meters that monitor each of our water towers throughout the county. And we thought that was pretty. We thought it was interesting. Uh, the other group, the water boys. Uh, we've been working with them a lot in projects and because we've been doing a lot of teamwork with them and helping out the green community. There's some pictures of us in the garden and there's another one in the garden. There's, we're ready to watch the nature trail up in that one. For example, we helped the water boys with their water girls project. And, well, there's one of the, it's by the, what is it, landfill or something? Yeah, it was yeah. by the landfill, local landfill. And we hooked all the pipes together to save water and they water plants around the courthouse and stuff with it. They'll get into that in their project more. That's their project. But. Um, we went through um, this elementary school and did a energy inventory of everything we found in the classrooms. And uh, this has our list of everything we we uh, found in there that uh, was using energy. And we actually found fridges that, you know, were plugged up overnight and everything. And we just we believe that just, you know, simple stuff like that, like sometimes unplugging them or just turning off the air conditioners. Nobody's here. You know, yeah, but no one's here. here. It would really help conserve a lot of energy. So all this 171 computers, I mean, uh, over the summer when not very many teachers are, you can unplug this stuff and save a lot of energy. We had, we've uh, did some stuff with eBay. We communicate with local citizens about recycling the, the three R's, reducing and reusing. We're hoping to save items from going to the local landfill station by placing them to sell on eBay. Uh, any items not sold on eBay will be donated to the GCMS football team for a yard sale. And if they're not sold there, they'll be donated to Wilson Youth Church Group for donation. Here's some pictures of the things we've uh, gotten. Miss Crane's surprise brought it for us. We've gotten, we're going to sell these on eBay and put them on there. Um, uh, these are some of the green issues. So uh, we looked around the community to help find ways and address the issues, and um, we found a lot of issues with habitat loss and, of course, water pollution throughout the community. Solution another project. Um, we actually went through and we thought about it, and so we decided to actually take on both. Uh, uh, the rain garden and habitat and just combine them into one and then um, we came up with um, our business 
and we thought that since we were doing this habitat and putting the um, native plants in it, why not just start a business with selling them to people around the community that, you know, we, we could include everybody that wanted to put native plants, uh, or if they wanted to put them in businesses or just have them in their gardens at home or, you know, just went at, uh, whatever people wanted. And so we went over that and thought about that. The definite, this explains what a rain garden is, in case some of you don't know. Uh, it's a, basically a planted area that allows rainwater to run off from urban areas like roofs, driveways, walkways, and compacted lawn areas. It, it gives us the opportunity to be absorbed into conservation purposes instead of running straight to the sewage drains or polluting nearby creeks and streams. So it's basically redirecting the water from instead of going to the sewage drains to like a garden or something, something that could be useful like that. There's another example of a rain garden I found on the internet that looks that looks pretty good compared to ours. Well, ours looks good too, but that's that's more of a professionally done one. There's the one in Salado. So we took off with it. And um, we started out, we did a percolation test uh, to see how deep the area needed to be. And it actually turned out the soil was really, really good out there in the front of the school. We put water in there and I, it probably couldn't have been probably 20, 25 minutes. It was already you know, absorbed into the soil. And so the soil is very fertile and it really helped um, our plants to live and be as beautiful as it is. The go with the rain garden, we was trying to we tried to dig it out to like a ramp shape, so it all, it would all go down that one area and spread out, and then come back up. But we had we put mulch in there so it wouldn't overflow too much, and it's also a good fertilizer for plants and it attracts the insects. And we this is just talking about how we built it to where the water could go in there just right to where the rain garden was being success. That's another picture of us doing the percolation test and. This is actually we took the dead, that tree was about dead, so we took it out, and we're out, we're out here uh, trying to make the soil fertile. Um, this is us when we were uh, digging digging out the the crater thing, like when we were trying to make the the hole for the water so it would be able to run into it. And this is us digging out right here. We were just uh, basically removing all the dirt so we can make the hole for the water. And that just it goes over everything we did there with that. We thought it was a useful and helpful way to transform this area for the better because it was the plants weren't really growing good. And we thought we'd see what we could do. There are some more pictures of us trying to get the soil fertile and arrange it to where. We can start playing and creating our uh, rain garden thing, make it look good. We're just trying to chop down the soil and get it to where it's good enough to start. Uh, there's some more pictures of it in the progress. This is us planting some flowers that we um, use from the garden over here for the, the schools. We've already got the mulch in it. We're, we're to creating it and trying to get it to look good. We're planting. What was that a moon? Uh, yes, I believe. Yeah, that was a moon. We 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 got those these uh the wildflower of the year from Salado. We planted them out there. I don't know how long it took them for the grow. They're supposed to be really pretty. And the, the lady up there, her name was Mary Carol Cooper, mm -hmm. and she gave them to us, and she said they would look good. So uh, we That's planted the, them in there. Just blue fall indigo. Yeah, they call it. Called, it's called blue fall indigo. That's a that flower we got out from the garden. We thought it would look good out there. And here's Chucky watering the plants. Trying to show off her muscles. <laughs> <laughs> and then that's some of the um, that's some of the other flowers that we planted in the garden. It's close to being done there, but we still we uh, added a lot more mulch to it. And more flowers. And uh, we cut this pipe here. I think that explains that later, though, what we did there. But that's more pictures of it. That's the uh, <laughs> Here's us trying to cut the pipe to where we get it built out for the, 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 the drain to where the water can come out into the right spot of the garden. It's where it can work properly. That's uh, Pete got a saw working with it. Pete helped us with that. 
here's where me and Derek installed it. Uh, took the, it's a lateral line, and we took it and hooked, connected it to the gutter so that water runs down from the gutter into it. And it'll show pictures of it uh, where it's cut off. It runs right through this hole. And it's got a close up up there of it. Yeah. And there's a good picture of it. The water runs right into the garden. There's a hole deep enough where it all get in there and spread out. There's another picture of it. I put the tiger in there. I liked it. Yeah, it's just for decorate, decorative purposes. <laughs> okay. Wow. water. That's. It looks. It's. We, it's come a long way from what we started with it. Looks a lot better. Yeah. Uh, that's about. That's about what it looks like finished. But it's not really grown yet. We'll have to wait and see how it goes. Hope our plants stay alive and stuff like that. But we noticed one the other day when it was raining before we hooked the lateral line up to that pipe that a lot of there's actually a, a lot of water that travels down that pipe. So we're hoping that with some good days of rain that that water, that garden should really take off with all the water that we I was surprised to see that much water that come down that pipe. So uh, there's a place in about a hospital. If we maybe there's a possibility we can do one down there. Uh, Persuade somebody to take make this possible in the future, or we could do it, or we could get somebody else, give somebody else the idea, and maybe they can go forth with it. But here's some pictures of it, and this this is probably this is a really good spot for it because right here you can make the garden and the water comes right straight down from the gutter. So we just think about the possibilities you could do with that, and that's another thing we could go forth into the future or something. And these are our uh, some of our sources. I'm going to read them off to him, Chuck. Bluegrass, pride, slate oak, entrepreneurial leaders and guest speakers. We had helped us a lot and accounted for around half to three-fourths of our information. Uh, there's a, they set up a social networking site for us. It's kind of a site to where people throughout the state, we can talk and communicate with them about stuff they're doing throughout other counties and stuff and after we like we, we I tied this up this morning, we finished it off and the three of us ended up with they give you points for doing activities and stuff like that. We had six hundred and fifty three points. Uh, thirty two groups combined, two hundred and thirty one friends and five hundred and fifty one activities. So we thought that was good. And then um, this is telling about the entrepreneurship and it just tells uh, throughout this program our group has really thought and explored about going out and starting our own potential business and uh, the people that have come here were really I really really respect them for what they have accomplished and what they've like made us believe that we can do and uh, it just really has inspired us to actually do this type of stuff in the future and so um, we created a, a business plan for our businesses of say, selling the native plants, and uh, we'd like to thank everybody with, uh, that's helped us and uh, you know guided us through this program. And we we were really glad to be part of this. Yeah, I'm glad to be. It's I'm been an honor. This program this summer. It's been an honor knowing everybody. Institute. It was uh, uh, founded by the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act in 2009. Uh, the reason we're here is to find a, out the problems and the solutions for something green to help out the community, and ours is water conservation. Problems of lack of water conservation. That's why we came up with the idea of water barrels, and it collects water off the roof. Like here it comes down, you put it on the, the downspout of the gutter and it runs into here and this one we got it where you can either cipher it out or you can maybe later on put a spigot down there for it. Water's conservation is very important for citizens and business owners to know because uh, we're polluting more water than the earth can naturally recycle and it's catch up with us after over a pretty long period of time and starting out with the rain barrels. We Go out as much as possible, and uh, 
there's many different kinds of pollution like sewage and fertilizers and it's just we can't compete with it because the earth can't recycle it fast enough. The use of uh, water in Grace County is 3 million gallons a day for public use. And it's, uh, population is 25,497 and 117 gallons per person, like washing, clothes, and dishes, all home needs, and baths and stuff. And if everybody installed a water burner, cut it nearly in half, like this is 1,274,850 gallons of water would be saved using a water burner. The problem in Gresham County, uh, there was a round table meeting and they figured out that we needed some water conservation. So we came up with the idea and, <coughs> and it worked at the transfer station. And it only took one night of a little small shower and it, it filled them up. And it broke down on the cost to use tap water out of the house so we could just use the water out for burrows. Thus, the water boys have found a solution. We figured out if you do make a rain barrel and everybody did have one, that we would save water and cut the cost in half. We were able to install a large enough barrel, a 55 gallon barrel, at the solid uh, waste transfer. So that way you can just water your plants, you don't have to go through the tap, it's easier, and it just cuts the cost in half. This is us making our water barrels. As you can see, here's the gutter. It goes. Go back. Here's the gutter system. The water just goes down. It fills up into these pipes and just sits in these 55 gallon barrels. We have three of them. You have an on and off valve, or you just turn it and the water comes out. The truck just backs up, gets it, uses the water for public use plants. Um, If, if we used the rain barrel, it's very inefficient in the cost to conserve water. In Kentucky alone, we get about 40 to 50 inches of rain. This is a graph just showing about like the month periods and how it rains. I mean, for us, we have a pretty high average of rain just in Kentucky compared to the U.S. alone. So. Um, if you buy a rain barrel from a hardware store, like brand new, it could cost you about 100 bucks or so. You could get like the more fancier one or the more convenient, but if you went with the more homemade and cheaper one, it has the same use, same everything, and it doesn't look as bad. Uh, entrepreneurial in our business model, we our business is creating and selling uh, water barrels, customized any way the customer would want, say school colors or favorite team, anything like that, we can make it at an affordable price, probably about 60 bucks, as in you could buy just a plain blue barrel on eBay or so for like 50 bucks, so right, we're saving you money just by going with us. Um, the business side of it, with the system installed, including our manpower and cost, it's about 60 bucks alone, so you're saving money. Uh, with this system of the three water barrels, you get about 165 gallons of water that you can store. Public use, just with a little light rain. That's all you need, and it'll fill these barrels up quicker than anything. We estimate about the barrels that we can empty with each rainfall. Truck just walks up to it, just pour it in there, and they can just go around. You'd be saving, saving the county and the city about 2,500 a year, and not to mention the environmental impact of saving water and using it wisely. Our goal will be to serve as a model so other people will be like us and want to go green and want to save the environment as much as we do. Um, to use and copy this system so other people will be like us, like I said, so it'll save money and time and you can serve water so that way it's just better for everybody. Okay, due to the success of our barrels at the Solid Waste Transfer Station, we've created Water Boys Incorporated so we can make barrels and sell them to the public and to the businesses around Preston County and further out.
This is our rain barrel that we constructed. We are selling it on eBay for no less than fifty dollars to maintain a profit, and we have it on eBay right now for sale. Our business. We developed a business plan for our business, and it explains the projects that we've done and the company Bluegrass Pride, and it shows that how much they are selling their barrels for. They sell them once a year, and they're selling their barrels just like ours, and they have local artists paint theirs. We put in there why ours is better and how much we're going to sell ours for. Our role in the community is we want to help local businesses and local communities go green and help the environment. Okay, we worked at the new judicial building and we helped rake the dirt up on the curbs so that water won't wash away the dirt so they can put grass in there. And we, we talked about ways to make Litchfield greener around the community. This is one of the ducks. We let ducks loose at the local, at the city park. Let them in the wild at the lake. This is our work for the Green Guard. This is us out back at the nature habitat. We are cleaning it up and cleaning the weeds out. This is at the um, ballpark on the nature trail. We're spreading mulch, and that's at the judicial building. So is that one. And this one is after we got done out back at the nature habitat. All right, and we also have the eBay store, like they said earlier, and. We have several items on there for sale that's been donated by different people. And here's a few of the items. We have these dolls and pillow and cards and we have more things, just not on here. And uh, this talks about our Kentucky KYStudentVentures.org. It's a communication site where we can talk with different people from different counties that's doing the same projects. And we've got on there and we've talked about our projects and theirs and the different things we're doing and getting different ideas. And our group is one of the most active ones on that site. We talk to more people and we have, you can add friends and everything and we're one of the most active groups on there. And community visibility. Uh, through this whole project, the months that we've, uh, the weeks that we've been doing it, we have been active in the community and getting the green idea out because we've been in the local newspaper and and we've talked to many city officials and everything else and this is a clip out from the local newspaper that we've got interviewed and we told about our ideas and people out in the community can look the newspaper and learn about what we've been doing and this is a Clarkson uh, inventory, Clarkson Energy Inventory. We walked around Clarkson School and we have went around the classrooms in different rooms and documented all the things that we have and in order to learn how we could save for the school. We have four copiers, 40 printers, 171 computers, 20 refrigerators, 36 televisions, a dishwasher, four stoves, one vending machine, 19 microwaves, and 40 air conditioners. That's throughout the school. And these things are on all the time. And we've learned that we had a guest speaker and we talked to them and he said that if we shut everything off when it's not being used, we could, look, we could save up to $10,000, this Clarks Elementary School. And other schools, we haven't done an inventory for them, but if they're anything like that, that'd save money and energy that we don't need. All right, and this is about work that we did. We worked with Clark, uh, the Clarkson City officials on the wildlife trail out here at the ballpark, and we spread mulch. They talked about that earlier. All right, and that's not all we did. We worked with... Uh, the different parks around the community, the all of them I think, and we put down new mulch and everything. And I don't think they said it earlier, but the Clarkson Ballpark, I mean uh, the Nature Trail there, all that mulch was recycled from the ice storm. It was shredded up and everything. So 
that is recycled. And we also cleaned out the holding tanks in Clarkson and cleaned them up. And these are our sources. So it's a step-by-step process of how we install the barrels at the solid waste transfer station. This is a summary of what we've done this summer. That's our business plan, and that is our barrel that we put on the back. Here it is, and hopefully have an auction on eBay coming soon. So. Mm -hmm. And for the water boys, uh, I'll probably make a drink for us. This barrel is a 55-gallon barrel that we got, and we sanded it down and painted it, and we can paint them to any color. And this is your average drain pipe that can hook up to a gutter system at a house. And you just hook it to your gutter, and this goes down this hole right here, and it'll collect the rainwater. And this plug comes out, and you can cipher it out. We can also have a spigot installed at the bottom. You just turn and hook your water hose to it. And that's what we're selling. I think that's about it. Any questions? At all? I think you did really well. Very impressed. Good try. Thank you. <laughs> Is there any other questions about what we're doing or our water barrels or 